and see what he can do in the midst of unbelievers, on the leading edge with his word, his power, his grace, and his mercy. For God's sakes, we're Lutheran. This is what we know. Winterberg Project, like, comment, subscribe. Something I noticed, so today's like towards the end of April, let's just say that, but it's close to the first day of Ramadan. And for y'all to know who Ra what Ramadan is, check uh, The importance of Ramadan also uh, comes out of uh, the revelation of the Quran, that they believe that the, the first verse of the Quran were revealed in, in a night uh, during uh, Ramadan to Muhammad for the first time. Actually, if you want more details, uh, they believe that the Quran, the word of Allah, letter and meaning eternal word of Allah. So they believe that uh, the Quran came down from the seventh heaven to the first heaven in Ramadan, all of it, and then was uh, revealed to Muhammad peace mail uh, during uh, in in uh, gradually during uh, his uh, his life. So uh, they observe or really seek one night called the Night of Destiny, which is very important for Muslims. They believe that uh, the, des uh, the destiny of all humanity is determined during that night, which lies in one of the, uh, the last 10 days of Ramadan. I'm noticing a lot of people saying, like, you know, a lot of institutions saying things like, have a blessed Ramadan, and this, this hopefully it reconciles all of us to the Creator and unity, but, like, we don't believe the same things. I'm not saying it to be a jerk, but you know, it's like a fundamental problem. And this is not a diss to our Muslim Muslim people. I have Muslim friends, Islam, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people think that loving your neighbor equals Christians not having convictions or not having beliefs. And when we have people doing things like this. I shouldn't even say people. This is a denomination. Like, this is supposedly, you know what I'm saying? And we also got this one right here. These are supposed to be bodies of believers as the organization that, that holds the doctrines sacredly and passes them down. You're basically celebrating the day that, like you're telling people have a blessed day. Let's translate it. Have a blessed Ramadan. You're saying, yo, have a good time celebrating the first revelation that Muhammad had that says your religion is false. No. I mean, that's like someone saying, yo, yo, I hope you have a good time celebrating your kid's birthday, but your kid's not really yours. What? No, nah, bro. That's not a compliment. Like, I, maybe it's just me. I really haven't seen Shiites or Sunnis truly saying, hey, happy day, Jesus risen day. Happy day, the Lord and God rose from the dead. I, I haven't seen that. I mean, maybe, maybe you might find a person that does it, but have you found the overall institution this is why fellowship's important. Like people have to realize that having convictions and who you truly fellowship with is important. Love your neighbor does not mean a Christian can't have convictions. Love a neighbor does not mean the coexist bumper sticker. Okay? It does not mean that I have to, oh, happy to hold witness day. Even though you deny that Jesus is God and you think he's an angel, I hope the day that you came up with that, you are blessed. I hope that the doctrines that you're giving to people, leading them astray, uh, blessed is the day those doctrines were created. Like when you really look at it, it's laughable. It's laughable. Now, we can go into a whole thing and sit here and say that, well, what do you expect? Like, you know, as far as ELCA, like they've been on this path for a minute. When we look at things that they do and things that they say. So it, it, you're right, it shouldn't be shocking. The things they do and things they say and the practices they hold. Like the first video I ever did on this channel, I'll put a link at the end, where it talks about how at a conference, 
not even conference, an assembly of all the, you know, people in the job nation, they removed the statement or the phrase it's about Jesus being the only way to salvation. At the assembly, this guy, Zach Johnson, I think his name, he tried to stop them. He's the guy who speaks first. He tried to stop them from removing it, but he failed and they did remove their proclamation that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. What was Zach had to say, man? Minnesota is in fact my um, proposed amendment that was just read and discussed by Bishop Law. Uh, I move to... <laughs> Time out. <laughs> who is this guy? Bro, like... <laughs> okay, near, stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. Anyhow, back to the show. Back. You may speak to the motion. Brothers and sisters, I make this motion in the defiant tradition of Martin Luther. I would like to direct everyone's attention to lines 639 and 640 of the Declaration, which states, I quote, We must be careful about claiming to know God's judgments regarding another religion, unquote. Brothers and sisters, God consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We as Christians consider that to be undeniable. The gospel, as all scripture, is God-breathed, and that comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. When we consider a portion of gospel where Jesus is the speaker, what we are really considering is the text of God reporting God's own statement. I am here to speak truth to power, even if it is an inconvenient truth. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do we as Lutherans need to be careful about proclaiming this message? No. Do we need to respect, care for, and love non-Christians? Absolutely, yes. I submit that the best way to respect and love our neighbors is to share the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ with them. Because the language I seek to strike is plainly inconsistent with the gospel. Two things. First, I noticed that everybody who came afterwards, their appeal and their, you know what I'm saying, their contestment of it, like, had nothing to do with scripture. It was things like, our God is big enough for everyone. What does that mean? Our God is big enough for our family to include all of these interfaith siblings. Our God is big enough for us to admit that we do not know everything there is to know. I. That's kind of like fundamental, that's scripture. But it was removed out. Things like that, you know what I'm saying, kind of show this path, and I can't be shocked, but it is something that needs to be spoken upon, because they are presenting themselves as a Christian denomination, and these are fundamental Christian things that things have we have to talk about. You can't just turn a blind eye to things. Point is, is love of neighbor is not condoning false teaching. It's not, I'm just going to be quiet, or I'm going to not even be quiet, I'm going to promote false teaching because my neighbor likes me too. My neighbor doesn't mind me promoting his false teaching, so to bring a smile to his face, I'm gonna promote that. No, no. Come on, man, we gotta do better. We, gotta do better. we have, to, have to have backbone and convi conviction. We gotta have backbone. Like, there's nothing wrong with me saying, okay, that, that's your holy day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm not gonna sit here and, and like, I've, I've been in situations where people of a different faith have had funerals that. I had to go to, you know what I'm saying? I respect for my family, friends, and things of that nature. Now, when they bow their hair, head in prayer, yo, I'm not disrespectful. I just don't pray. I just sit there. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things that, listen, I can't do that. I'm here out of respect for my family member that passed and support the family and things of that nature, but I'm not going to pray to a false god. I view that similar to this. But from an overall institutional standpoint, I can be respectful of your tradition and your customs, even though they're false. But I don't have to celebrate the creation or the, or, or the day that this false teaching was invented or came up on. I could see a, a Muslim brother saying, I'm about to celebrate Ramadan. I'd be like, oh, you know, cool, you know, yo, be safe. But as an organization, as a denomination... I can't just put out blanket statements like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then people say, well, what would Jesus do? WWJD. I don't think Jesus would be hanging out 
and celebrating with, with, with the um, the BAL people, the B-A-A-L, like, you know, happy sacrifice day. I disagree with it, but I, I don't, I, I really doubt that. I'm just saying, I mean, I'm not saying Jesus would hate them or not be friends with them or not love them and be cool with them, but I doubt that he would promote or celebrate a festivity that went against the one true God. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not saying that. See, people get it twisted. They really believe that love of neighbor means co-sign or do whatever a neighbor wants to do. That's not what love of neighbor means. And love of neighbor doesn't mean I have to be a jerk to you because I'm proclaiming the gospel. It doesn't mean that either. Those are two ditches on two different sides of the roads. On one side of the road, the ditch is a little deeper, though. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, that's not what love of neighbor means. I don't have to co-sign celebrating the first rev revelation of a false prophet. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have to comment on it. I don't have to say, you know, oh, yeah, he's a false teacher. And this and then what you're celebrating is heresies. I don't have to bash their tradition that they face or go out there and do that when I know they find it holy. I could do it on a different day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't have to do that. But on the same note, I don't have to promote it from my platform as a religious institution that claims to believe that that God is the Trinity, three in one. God lived a perfect life, came down to Jesus, died, rose for your sins and mine, cleansing us, giving us a new heart, reconciling us with God. They deny that fundamentally. And we're going to promote the day that, the first day the revelation came to the guy who basically pinned the document that denies that. And like I say, I'm not, I'm not turning this into an Islam versus Christian debate channel. I'm not, I don't even like those discernment guys, to be honest with you. But, I do think it's a problem that we have groups like the ELCA and other dudes are orthodox. I'm not sure which one, what branch or who, but yo, come on, man. Like, you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Anyhow, like, comment, subscribe.